let's take a look at these questions here. Um, they all involve exponential functions. So it might be worthwhile just to take a second and make sure you remember this very important formula that uh, the derivative of c to the x is, well, you, we remember that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But e is a specific number. So what would the derivative of 2 to the x be? Or what would the derivative of 10 to the x be? Well, this is where this formula comes in. In this case, we take c to be 2. And in this case, of course, we take c to be 10. So what is this general formula? Well, just like for the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the derivative of c to the x is pretty much equal to c to the x. But there is a constant out front, and it's the natural log of c. So this formula here only applies to values of c, which are, well, I just usually take the c to be between 0 and 1 or c can be bigger than 1. Those are the two different cases. Um, when c is equal to 1, 1 to the x is just 1, and the derivative of that is 0. And ln of 1 is 0 as well. So it's, it is even true for c equals 1. But uh, when c equals 1, this is just a constant function. And I would rather just remember that the derivative of a constant is 0. But if you like to, you can include c equals 1 in this formula as well. So Because it's true for that one as well. It's just a matter of style. We don't include it. So, But anyways, you know, c, when I apply this formula, when c is equal to 2, it tells me the derivative of 2 to the x is basically 2 to the x, except in front I have a, a little annoying constant of ln2. And same with uh, here. Um, the derivative of 10 to the x is basically 10 to the x. But in front, we have this little constant, ln 10. Now, this is not log 10, right? Log 10 is 1, and I could get rid of it. But this is different. This is the natural log base e. So this is, uh, this, this is just some ugly decimal. And we prefer just to leave it as an exact, exact value and write it like this. So we have a little review of that. Um, maybe I should also, what I like to do is just recall, how do we apply the chain rule? with this? Well, the, uh, the derivative of c to anything, like c to the power of g of x, if you want to do that derivative, it'll be, well, we have that constant ln c in front, c to the power of g of x. That's uh, derived just from this basic formula. And then, just as usual, afterwards, we multiply by g prime of x. So that's... Uh, we're going to use this concept here in uh, most of these. Well, in A and C anyway. Great. Let's uh, try A. One moment. All right, finally ready to go. What is, how are we going to approach this derivative? Well, I think it's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. We're going to use this formula here with c being 10 and g of x being cosecant x. So let's try it. So the derivative of this is an exponential, so it's basically the same thing. But we have to multiply by ln of the base. So ln 10 is out front. And then times the derivative of cosecant x. Um, what is that again? Well, it's minus cosecant x cotan x. Just one of those things you have to remember. So that's not too bad for part A. Uh, part B. This one is a very important exercise, I think. It's simple, but it'll teach you something if you don't know how to do it. The, uh, the idea here is that we have one function that's an exponential and one function that's a power function. You remember if you have a function like this, x to the n? This is called a power function, right? And 
if I have and how about I how about I use C to denote the power and then you have another function g of x that's c to the power of x and this is called an exponential function right this function grows much faster to infinity than this one does as x approaches infinity so these are fundamentally different functions and we know how to do the derivative of this one right the derivative of x to the c is c x to the c minus one so some students, when they approach this derivative, they think that you can go the same thing, right? It's They think you can go something like that, and that's not true. So let's uh, apply the right formula here, which is the exact formula we just talked about. So I don't need to recopy it. I just gave the derivative of c to the x. So let's uh, realize which one is which, right? Which one is the exponential here, and which one's the power function? Well, the, the one that has a base being the constant and the variable in the exponent, that's the exponential. And the power is reversed, right? Here the base is the variable and the exponent is the constant. So anyways, pretty obvious by now that this is the uh, power function here, right? And this is the exponential. This is a constant. This my, Here my C is p uh, pi. And so we have exponential. And here the capital, the sorry, the little C is pi as well, but it, this is the power one. So let's do the derivative finally. Well, this one I apply the first formula, this one. So bring the pi to the front, x to the pi minus 1. You know, this derivative is not much different than the derivative of x cubed, right? Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, um, or 3x to the 3 minus 1. The thing is, 3 minus 1 we can just write as 2. But here, pi minus 1, you can't simplify it. You just have to leave it. And it's perfectly acceptable like that. Don't be tempted to say, well, pi is 3.14 and 3.14 minus 1 is 2.14. Don't write 2.14. That's not good style. So this derivative is the formula for exponential. So the derivative of that is basically pi to the x, but in front we have ln of the base, which is pi. And that's uh, the answer for that one. What about c? 10 to the 10 to the x. That's a good little exercise. This is a very fast growing function. So let's think about that little formula that we gave above there, right here. How to use the chain rule with exponential. Why don't we rewrite this with c being filled in as 10? So we know that the derivative of 10 to the x is well, ln 10, 10 to the x. We've said that many times. So what is 10 to the power of g of x? 10 to the power of something weird. What is that derivative, well, it's 10 to the g of x with ln 10 in front. And, of course, afterwards, you multiply by g prime of x. Let me just make this look a little bit better. All right. So we're going to apply this right now. What is g of x going to be? It's going to be 10 to the x. So in your mind, just blur just consider 10 to the x is just one dot and don't look at anything don't look at it as it's complicated or anything just 10 to anything how do you find its derivative you write this you write ln 10 times 10 to the anything times the derivative of that thing right and I'm going slower here. I should have I could just re I could have just kept going, but I just wanted to make sure it was clear what we were doing here. And this is easy now, right? I wrote it here. So it's ln 10 times 10 to the x. Um I know I, you're not supposed to simplify, but can you simplify this? Not really, but I guess you have two copies of this. So you could write ln of 10 squared. And notice that this one can be uh, simplified a little bit too, right? Remember that, you know, 10 to the n times 10 to the m is 10 to the n plus m. So if we think of n as 10 to the x and m as x, we would see that this is the same as 10 to the power of 10 to the x plus 1. So that's simplified. And then finally, the last one here.
what is going to happen with that. This one's going to be quotient row, right? Um, notice this exponential, the C is 1 half, right? So that's the case between 0 and 1. In this case, the exponential is 2. That's the case C bigger than 1. It'd be nice if you know what the graph of 2 to the x looks like and the graph of 1 half to the x looks like. The graph of, uh, anyways, I won't. We'll do that. We, no, those, those concepts are covered in the pre-calculus videos. Now, let's do the quotient rule here. The derivative of the numerator is, well, ln2 times 2 to the x. That's uh, our basic formula. Then we multiply by this left alone. Minus, now we leave this alone. And we multiply by this. Well, it's going to be 1 over all this stuff. I'm using chain rule right now. All this is, we know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And so, therefore, the derivative of, by chain rule, the derivative of ln of anything is 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. So in this case, uh, when I do this uh, derivative, g of x is this 1 half to the x plus x. And I'll worry about the derivative of that later. So let's see here, 1 over that. So I'll just recopy it. Um, times the derivative of this. I'm doing this right now. How do I find the derivative of this? Well, it's uh, just our formula with c being a half. So it's ln of a half times the 1 half to the x. That's all there is to it. And of course, the derivative of x is 1. So that's the numerator of our quotient rule. Running out of room a bit here. All over, don't forget when you're using quotient rule, you have the square of the denominator. Uh, how about I put the square here? That way I don't, if I put the square here, it'd be a little bit sloppy because it it's, doesn't mean what I intended to mean in that case, right? When I put the square here, I'm only squaring what's in brackets here and then taking the ln afterwards. I, if I, to be clear, I'd have to add another set of brackets, right? So in order to avoid that extra set of brackets, I'm going to throw the square on there. Same notation as the trig functions, right? When you write sine squared x, you really mean uh, sine x squared, right? So same thing here. When I write ln squared x, I mean ln x squared. Let me erase that so it doesn't look messy. Let's finish it. Um, we just have to recopy this, right? All I did is square the numerator. I didn't do any denominator. So the derivative of this is here. This is recopied. Minus. This is recopied. And then all of this stuff is the derivative of the denominator. I did 1 over that thing. And then I times by the derivative of that thing. And then I squared the denominator. So I hope that's all right. I was just looking over the solutions here and I noticed that I had made a small mistake at this point right here. Um, this derivative is fine, but when you simplify, I didn't apply the rule that I mentioned here. You're supposed to add the two exponents, right? So it should be 10 to the x plus x. And for some reason I wrote a 1 there. I hope you noticed that. So let me correct that. So that's for question C. Just a small correction on the simplified version of the answer.